So the question that we ask is, uh, considering uh, these kind of spaces, when there is no um, Euclidean factor in the domain, is the rank uh, monotonous under a coarse embedding? And when there is only a Euclidean factor of dimension one, is the, the rank monotonous under uh, coarse embeddings? And we can now answer uh, these uh, questions. Um, so for uh, when there is no Euclidean factor in the domain, consider as a symmetric space or a product of symmetric spaces with uh, of non-compact type, I mean, no Euclidean factor. Compact type. Um, no. Factor. I mean, can uh, S can uh, can be a product of uh, symmetric spaces. It's not necessarily reducible. And um, B, a Euclidean building. Then X. Uh, which is a product, this space cannot be embedded into any, uh, so in the target, we allow uh, the target to be any proper compact uh, cat zero space, not necessarily symmetric space or a building. Proper, proper co-compact cat zero of rank strictly less than the rank of X. So when we don't have Euclidean factor in the domain, we have this monotonicity, like for the quasi isometric case. So to answer our uh, examples, so SL4R over SO4R, so this symmetric space of rank three, cannot be embedded into any symmetric space of rank two, even though the dimension here can be arbitrarily big. For any n b greater than or two. Um, another example is product of three uh, trees, regular trees. This one cannot be embedded into the symmetric space of SL3R. Because the domain has rank three, the target has rank uh, two. For um, the case when there is a Euclidean factor in the domain, um, we consider this is prime again, symmetric spaces. Uh, no Euclidean factor again. I will not say just, uh, okay, let's see. Of non-compact type, which means no Euclidean factor. And um, BB prime Euclidean buildings. Um, so, in this case, um, the product of the symmetric space and the Euclidean building with a Euclidean factor, this space, cannot be embedded into any product of a Euclidean space, a symmetric space, and a building of rank strictly less than rank of, uh, of X. So here we see that when there is a Euclidean factor in the domain, it's more restrictive in the target. So in the, tar the target here is a special case of this target. But now since we have a Euclidean factor, we cannot allow the target to be any uh, 
proper compact cat zero space, but it's only it's only working for symmetric spaces buildings with uh, possibly Euclidean factor. And we will see later why. For now, we still cannot say uh, if it's true for all uh, compact cat zero spaces. For example. Um, we can improve this. We can improve this embedding here. We can say that even by replacing the tree by R, this embedding is still not possible. Over S on three R. And to give uh, another example, if I consider the, um, the Bratitz building of SLN of QP, so which is a building of rank n minus one, and I want to compare it with the building of, with the symmetric space of SLN for S O and R. So these both uh, these spaces have rank n minus one. But just adding a Euclidean factor here prevents from having this embedding. So even though the dimension in the domain is just n minus one plus one, which is n, and here the dimension is like n squared. So the dimension of the charge is very, is very big, but since the rank here is just greater than the rank in the in the target, so it's not possible. Uh, okay, so now let's look. Let's see the um, the main tools that uh, uh, the main tools of the of the proof. So these are the homological. Healing functions. So these are um, invariants that measure the difficulty to fill uh, a sphere by a ball or a cycle by a chain. So we will work in the metric space in general. Consider X to be a metric space. And we will start uh, step by step and we will define uh, uh, the chains take an integer n and we define a key chain uh, in x uh, so these are Lipschitz chains but i will just call them key uh, chains which are just linear combination finite linear combination Uh, of of Lipschitz maps from uh, the simplices. So here, a i is an integer, and sigma i is just a Lipschitz map from the k simplex to x. This is the simplex. Um, okay. Now, for such a k chain, we can define its uh, its volume, its k volume. So we start by defining the volume of simplices. So the k volume of sigma i that I will denote volume k of sigma i. Uh, so for general metric spaces, we can just consider it as a black box. We have um, a simplex, we can associate to it uh, a volume. But for when X is a Riemannian manifold, um, manifold, uh, the volume is just the volume of this map is just the integral 
of the over the magnitude of the Jacobian. So you have a Lipschitz map from this, from uh, let's say R2. So this two simplex, two like that. We just compute the the the, the integral of the Jacobian. It gives you this. So this is the volume k of sigma i. And we need uh, so. In general, in the, the, the homology theory, we just consider continuous maps. So uh, the chains are just continuous functions. But here we consider Lipschitz functions, especially to do this integration. Because uh, the sigma i is Lipschitz, so it's uh, differentiable almost uh, uh, everywhere. And so we can integrate this uh, integral has a this sense. And now to define the volume of the k chain, which defined as just the sum of the volumes of the simplices. Okay. Uh, now consider uh, a cycle. Okay. K cycle, which means a K chain with no boundary. So chain such that so for example, uh, a sphere or, a, or just a closed curve. And as a K chain, it has a K volume that we just uh, saw before. But we can also uh, define its k plus one fill-in uh, volume. Uh, which is the fill-in volume k plus one of a cycle is just the infimum among all the possible uh, of the among all the volumes of the possible uh, fillings volume k plus one omega so the boundary of omega is sigma so you have your uh, your cycle sigma you consider all the possible fillings by a two chain and you take the infimum of these volumes. Okay. And if so, uh, there is also always a, a possibility that such an imbit, such a feeling is not uh, possible. But for the spaces that we will consider, uh, these spaces are contractible. So all the um, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the homology is trivial for all dimensions, and so there is always a feeling. So this feeling function, this feeling volume is always uh, finite. Um, and now that we define the feeling volume of a cycle, we can define the feeling function of the, the whole space. Now we can define the k plus one fill-in function of x. So take L greater than zero, we take, and we define if we, um, k plus one L, which is the worst case uh, scenario of all the possible fillings of cycles of some, of some volume, uh, of some bounded volume. Feeling volume k plus one sigma such that sigma is a k cycle and a volume of sigma is bounded by k volume of sigma is bounded by l so what does this mean 
is you fix an L and you look at all cycles that have volume less than L. So for example, if K equals um, one, you take all the one cycles so of volume less than L, And the fill-in, the, this fill-in function gives you the supremum of the possible fill-in of such cycle. So in this case, for example, in the, in the Euclidean space, it's attained by uh, spheres. So this is the best case. I mean, uh, the worst case in the sense that it has the 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 worst uh, feeling the, the the bigger feeling the biggest feeling okay so now these feeling functions these are uh, quasi isometry invariants of the space so if x is quasi isometric to y they have the same feeling functions up to uh, some uh, uh, equivalence uh, relation but it detects the the degree if it's a uh, a polynomial. So I will give some examples. If uh, x is Rn, you take any degree between n and 2, the filling function of uh, a in, of a Euclidean space is L to k of k minus one. This is by Federer, was proved by Federer and Fleming in the 60s. So this is very intuitive because it just says that, for example, if you have a curve of length L, uh, the worst case scenario is that it bounds an area, uh, a surface, a disk of area uh, um, L squared. So every closed curve of length L uh, can be filled by uh, a chain. area L squared. The same thing for, uh, uh, you take, um, instead of a closed curve, you take a sphere, a topological sphere. If it has area uh, L squared, it can be filled at most by L cubed, etc. Um, now, if X, If X is a hyperbolic space and you take K, the, so the, the example here is for K equal one, uh, I'm sorry, two. K equals two means that the fill-in of cycles of dimension one. Um, here, the fill-in function is linear. And this was proved by Gromov in 87. I have a small question here. Yes. Uh, you said that, uh, for example, in R3, mm -hmm. if you take closed uh, curve, like uh, of length one, let's say. Yes. The area that it, uh, you, can, you can put a disk on this, uh, uh, such that its boundary is this curve. Mm -hmm. And the area of the disk is as big uh, as big as you want, so because you are in R three. No, yes, but this the filling function says that there exists a disk whose uh, area is smaller than a constant times L squared. Ah, but so, uh, it's not the supremum. Yeah? It's not the supremum. No, no, it's the supremum. Since the supremum is ah, L can be filled. Okay, okay. Yes. Ah. Can be filled. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah, in fact, maybe uh, maybe there is no disk, but uh, surface, not trivial. Yeah, because here you are considering uh, filling by any 
Uh, yes, by any a, chance, yeah. yeah. Yes, it's maybe not a disk, but it's a, it's a chain. Yes. Mm, okay. Uh, for example, so uh, in general, it's not. So, for example, if I take this, um, uh, this, so either the filling can be this one, or it all can be uh, like the, this one. But uh, let's not uh, go into uh, uh, So we just consider it's it's a uh, uh, a curve. It can be filled by a, a chain which is not topologically not necessarily a disk. Yes. Um, uh, and now for the for the hyperbolic spaces, if I take a curve of length L, it can always be filled by a chain of area. Uh, less than a constant with well, depends on the space times L. So the filling in a hyperbolic space is much more efficient than the filling in the Euclidean space and that for all dimensions. A topological sphere in, uh, in a hyperbolic space can always be filled by uh, a chain of volume uh, less than a constant times the area of this uh, sphere, etc. So this uh, we recover the linear isoparametric inequality in the hyperbolic space. And more generally, if X is a complete uh, cut zero space, then uh, the filling uh, function is always bounded above by the finite function in the Euclidean space. So the Euclidean space is the worst case scenario. For all k, the FVXKL, uh, the finite function is less than the one in the Euclidean uh, space. This, that was proved by Wenger. Okay. So uh, to go back to our question, so we are interested in embeddings between uh, spaces with respect to the rank. And why are we interested in these uh, feeling functions? It's because they can detect the, the rank of our space. So this, thanks to these following two results. If I have X uh, proper, compact cut zero space. If I go above the rank and k greater than the rank of x, then uh, the feeling function of uh, the k feeling function of um, of our our space is much smaller than the one in the Euclidean space. Which means that when I go above the rank, I can feel in a much more efficient way than uh, compared to uh, a feeling in a Euclidean space. This is a result by Wenger. And for symmetric spaces and buildings, I have even stronger uh, result. If X is a product of RD times symmetric space times a building. And if I go above the rank, then uh, the filling becomes even linear, like if I was living in a hyperbolic space. Uh, so let's give an example. Consider, suppose that. X is a symmetric space of rank uh, two. For example, either H2 times H2 or SL3R over SO3R. Uh, for the filling of cycles, of one cycles, 
it's the same thing as uh, the fill-in of uh, one cycles in the Euclidean space. Because since I have rank two, I can always find cycles in an R2, a plane that is embedded that are, that are hard to fill. So, um, I can always find uh, one cycles hard to fill because I have a copy of R2 isometric inside of X. And if I take this copy of R2, I draw a circle, then its filling is L squared. Uh, if I draw a a circle of uh, of uh, length L, the best feeling possible of this circle is L squared. Because when I go, even if I could go uh, beyond the space, the it's it's just going to be worse. So the best feeling of this circle is inside this R2, which is L squared. But when I, I instead of taking one cycle, if I take two cycles, uh, the feeling is much more efficient. But there is a constant C prime uh, such that for every two cycle sigma, such that volume two of sigma is L, uh, there exists a three chain such uh, omega such that delta omega is sigma and uh, volume three of one is less than a constant, this constant times L. So when I go beyond the, for these um, two cycles, the fill-in is like the fill-in in a hyperbolic space. Okay. Now, these are the two uh, main uh, results that uh, we use in the proof. And now we can restate our result in this vocabulary of uh, filling functions. So theorem one can be uh, restated in the following way. Uh, X, which is S times B of rank K cannot be embedded coarsely in any space. Why? Such that the K filling is sub Euclidean. Um, so here it means that the the K filling it's like for a like we, we, we saw before, if the K filling of the target space is smaller than the K filling in a hyperbolic space, we cannot embed a space of rank K into uh, this space. And theorem two can be uh, restated as now, now I have a Euclidean factor. Suppose that the total rank here is K. This space cannot be embedded into Y uh, such that the K filling, K filling of Y, now it's more uh, restrictive. It has to be linear. So since, since uh, here we have run K, but, but we have this Euclidean factor. Here, I need a stronger condition yeah. that prevents me from having this embedding. Here, Y is, uh, is just a co-compact uh, cat zero space. Uh, here, uh, no, uh, no, well, uh, any space that satisfies this. Okay. And since co-compact spaces, uh, for proper co-compact spaces uh, of, of rank K, Frank smaller than k, this is true. We get the first version of, uh, of this result. But here, any space 
We just ask to be complete and to satisfy this. And uh, so uh, here, that's why we cannot, uh, in the first formulation of, uh, of this uh, second result, we cannot, uh, for now, we cannot have all uh, proper compact at zero spaces because above the rank, the fill-in is uh, just sub-Euclidean and it's not linear. And above the rank, it's linear only for symmetric spaces, products of symmetric spaces uh, and buildings. Okay. So now to conclude, I will just say this. Rank K, a space of rank K. So either no Euclidean factor or Euclidean factor of, uh, of uh, dimension one cannot be coarsely embedded into a space with small K filling. Um, so, and the, the idea of the proof is that when, so I will just explain by hands, uh, when in the domain, when you have a rank K and no Euclidean factor, it means that your space, the domain, behaves almost like if it's a product of K spaces of exponential growth. And such spaces are products of spaces of exponential growth. If you send it by a course embedded, you cannot distort it uh, a lot. But on the other side, when you have a small fill-in in the target, it means that if I take a subset, a cycle in the, in the domain, I send it by F and I fill it, and the fill-in is much smaller than the original fill-in, there must be a, a distortion, a contraction somewhere. And this leads to a, a, a contradiction since spaces uh, of rank K cannot be a lot distorted. And uh, these two conditions, uh, these two properties cannot coexist. And uh, I will stop here. Thank you very much.